Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. It's the last thing that you'd expect to happen at home. A boy attacked by a pack of his own dogs, and now he's fighting for his life. Plus, targeting heartbroken pet parents. San Antonio Animal Care Services is warning all pet owners of a scam that criminals are using to try and get fast cash from distraught owners. But first, we're going to start with breaking news tonight. Police are looking for a shooter who they say shot a six-year-old and a 23-year-old man. Happened on the 5800 block of Medina Base Road just before 8 o'clock tonight. Our Avery Everett is at the scene right now. So, Avery, we have to ask you, how are the victims? And also, what do police know about the shooter at this point? Well, Stephanie, emotions are high right now as police just minutes ago confirming that there were two victims. But what we do know are that both of them are facing non-life-threatening injuries. One six years old, the other 23. I want you to take a look at the scene behind me of what's left right now. Just minutes ago, officers still actively investigating out here. A sergeant says officers are still going through witness statements. As for evidence, police searched around the pool of this apartment complex where this all happened. Police confirmed one vehicle and the pool house were struck by bullets. As for what weapons were used? Officers say it seems like handgun sized weapons were used, but this investigation is still ongoing and police are still looking for suspects. They do have a suspect vehicle, a red Mercedes with silver lining and tinted windows, but there are currently no district descriptions rather of any suspects at this time. As we continue to learn more of this case, we'll keep you updated right here on air and online at KSOT.com. Reporting live, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. In other news tonight, a man is dead and a woman is injured after the owner of a stolen truck shot them while trying to get it back. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. Someone stole a man's pickup truck. And San Antonio police say that the owner tracked his vehicle to a parking lot at the South Park Mall this afternoon. And when the man got there, another man and woman were inside of the pickup truck. Now, police say the owner took out his gun and demanded that the two people inside of the truck get out. But investigators say the man inside the vehicle then pulled his own gun and shot the owner of the pickup. And that's when the owner returned fire and killed the man. The woman that he was with in the vehicle was also shot. She's in critical condition. Police Chief William McManus said that while the owner did have the right to take his property back, he still doesn't recommend taking justice into your own hands. Police in Seguin are looking for a man who they say left three people, three mentally disabled people inside of a hot car. You just saw the man. He's Corey Gill. He's supposed to be the caregiver for the three people who were found in a hot car around the Stratton Oak apartment complex. Now, so far, Gill's been suspended from his job. Investigators say that Gill is going to be charged with three counts of deadly conduct. If you know where he is, you can call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. A 13-year-old fighting for his life tonight after his dogs, his own dogs, turned on him. As the night team's John Paul Barajas explains, the boy's injuries were so severe that he had to be airlifted to University Hospital. One by one, six pit bulls were removed from this home of Escalante Run and Agave Spine. The Bear County Sheriff's Office responding to the scene because the dogs attacked a 13-year-old boy who lives in the home. The boy's grandparent called 911. He heard the young boy screaming. Came into the room and saw at least one, possibly up to all six of these pit bulls piled up on the on the young boy attacking him. Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us the family owns all six dogs. They raised them and wanted to sell them. At this point, it's unclear why the dogs attacked the boy. The sheriff tipped his hat to the deputy that responded to this house, saying he happens to be one of only two fully trained paramedics that they have. He believes quick thinking and that training gave the victim in this case a fighting chance. He had some specialized gear with him. He was able to administer aid, but he, he actually told us that the bites that he'd seen were, were probably some of the, the worst wounds that he's ever seen on a person. The young boy was airlifted to University Hospital and is expected to survive. As for the dogs, two of the dogs were owner surrendered and then the other four were taken as part of a 10 day quarantine period. We'll see what ends up happening with with those dogs, but I'm, I'm fully expecting that the other two, unfortunately, will most likely be uh, euthanized. The sheriff says right now it's too early to tell if the parents will face charges. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. 
San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg joined President Joe Biden today to announce new federal actions to protect workers and communities dealing with extreme heat. The mayor and the president were also joined by the mayor of Phoenix, another city that's experiencing record-breaking heat this summer. The president announced that he's asking the Labor Department to issue the first-ever hazard alert for the heat and also to ramp up protections for workers in hotter climates. It's something that Mayor Nuremberg says that San Antonio has already been doing here at home. We're going to do everything possible to protect uh, our most vulnerable workers, especially those outdoor workers, uh, for basic things like being able to access water breaks. So today, the government also unveiled a new website. You see it there. It's called heat.gov. You can go on there to get information on how to cope with heat waves and other hot weather problems. Now, speaking of, let's send things on over to our meteorologist, Adam Kasky. Yeah, today we just briefly and barely hit 100 degrees this afternoon. The average being 96 and the record 106 for the day today. And for the most part, our high temperatures were around that 100 degree mark and even a little above with the exception of the hill country. The new drought monitor is in. We're going to look at that, compare it to previous drought monitor and look what kind of changes have been made in our sunny and dry pattern and an update on the tropics along with the African dust in just a bit. Adam, thank you. In other news now, mental health is a top priority for the San Antonio Fire Department, and that's because this year the number of deadly fires in San Antonio has already hit double digits. Twelve people have lost their lives. The night team's Avery Everett shows us how fire officials are helping those first responders cope. The kind of calls that we go on are reminiscent of, of bad scenes from a movie, but it's real. Every scene stays with San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood. It's very difficult for us to see a lot of the things that we see, and then the expectation is that we get back on that truck. Especially the one on Winding Oak Drive from Saturday morning. The call the other night, it, it affected so many of us because there were kids involved. SAFD has made mental health a priority this week. Yes. Checking in after the deadliest recorded house fire in more than a decade. Somebody from peer support reached out to every known person that was at that fire scene and will continue to as long as there's name. Dr. Melissa Graham runs the intensive in-house wellness program at SAFD. And right alongside her is Slider. Slider, love. There you go. Just petting him is super soothing. Chief Hood and Dr. Graham say mental health has been at the forefront of the department for years, using apps and websites to offer support every single day. Yeah, it's constant check-ins. But when tragedy starts to stack up, Graham says trauma can sneak in. Trauma is cumulative. Like, this one might not get you, this one might get you, not, this one might not, this one might not. And then this one, which is not really all that different than the other ones, is the one that gets you. And Hood says staying on top of how his department needs to heal is a top priority. We put units out of service. We went to visit. So even if this scene can't be forgotten, firefighters can learn to live with what they've seen. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. So starting next Friday, Dr. Graham says that she's going to take Slider the dog to one fire station every week, and fire station number one is going to be its first stop. Scam warning tonight. Animal Care Services wants to make sure that you know about this one. The agency says that someone pretending to be with ACS called a woman trying to get money. You see, the woman had been looking for her pets, and the person who pretended to be with ACS called her and said that they had her pets but would return them only if she sent money through Venmo. Sounds suspicious, right? Well, they said the pets needed expensive care from the vet. And that's when the woman got suspicious, so she called San Antonio's Animal Care Services. This is indeed a scam, uh, a pretty sick scam, something that, you know, is just adding insult to injury for pet parents who are heartbroken. Now, in this case, the woman did not send money, but ACS wants to make sure that you heard that story so this doesn't happen to you. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your Night Beat News Flash. Kimberly Rubio, who lost her daughter Lexi in the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde last year, is running for mayor of that city. This comes days after the city council approved a special election for that mayoral seat. Over the last year, Rubio has been pushing for changes to gun laws in Texas and also across the country. If she wins, she'd be replacing Mayor Don McLaughlin, who's recently announced that he's running for a seat in the state house. By the way, the special election for the mayor's seat is going to take place November 7th. 
In Michigan, prosecutors are making their case for the Oxford High School shooter to spend the rest of his life in prison. That's Ethan Crumley. He shot and killed four students at his school back in 2021, just six months before the Robb Elementary School tragedy. Crumley's attorneys acknowledge that he's in line for a lengthy prison sentence, but also argue that he should also be eligible for parole. And that hearing is going to resume tomorrow. If you're planning a road trip before the summer ends, hold up. Make sure that you budget more money for gas. Gas is up 12 cents these last three days, bringing the national gallon average to 371. That's the highest it's been in eight months. And the spike is partly due to a jump in oil prices. Also, the extreme heat is causing maintenance issues at some refineries. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Now we want you to stick around redefining what it means to own a business. What some San Antonio teens are learning now that's going to help them in the future. Plus, staying hydrated in the heat. Yes, a struggle for everybody. It's also different for everyone, especially when we're in the midst of a record-breaking summer. Coming up, what to drink to help you beat the heat.